Hey Mushroom Nerds, it's Anna McHugh. I want to talk to you a di today about Amanita jacksonii. This is a very uh, popular edible mushroom in the southeastern U.S. Uh, I eat it, you know, kind of sparingly. I oftentimes will have a little bit of it raw and just like toss it with some olive oil and some salt and pepper. Sometimes I fry it, but really it's, at that point it's just sort of like fried, salty, uh, sort of buttery mushroom. But, you know, these mushrooms are just so beautiful and uh, distinct. It's really fun to get to know them and identify them. I also want to talk to you about uh, Amanita section caesariae. So Amanita jacksonii is one of the species within uh, a section of the Amanita genus called the, uh, you know, the Caesar mushrooms, basically. And, uh, you know, there are a lot of them in the southeastern U.S. that are not Amanita jacksonii, like strictly and particularly, but are uh, related and also edible. So I want to talk to you about those, and I have a couple of examples. I'm holding one right now. So this is, uh, you know, an Amanita that may and more than likely doesn't have a name. So the best thing for me to call this is Amanita section caesarea. So that's referring to its sort of like overall gestalt and characteristics, which I'll discuss in a second briefly. And then um, Stirps hemibaffa, which basically is like, it is uh, somewhat resembles a red and sort of vermilion colored uh, mushroom called Amanita hemibaffa. So anyway, that's just sort of a reference point uh, to go with if you're interested in the Latin. Uh, but you know, ultimately you will f see these listed as uh, Caesar mushrooms, slender Caesar mushrooms, sun sunburst Caesar mushrooms, all kinds of different common names that people are starting to develop as it becomes clear also that we have more than just a handful of these, uh, you know, beautiful uh, species. I also want to talk to you about a couple of lookalikes for Amanita jacksonii and other uh, Caesar mushrooms. And then finally, I just want to share a couple of random Amanitas that are super duper cool because the genus itself, like you could spend um, easily several lifetimes getting to know it and become familiar with it. And, uh, you know, that's also my way of covering my ass and saying, if I make a mistake, please correct it in the comments. This is an area that I am very much still learning and grappling with, even though I've been, you know, hunting mushrooms for fun uh, for, you know, a number of years. I'm only now starting to scratch the surface when it comes to some of the more advanced uh, taxonomy. And even with that, I have, you know, <laughs> The more, the more you know, the more you know you don't know, that kind of thing. All right, so let's talk about Amanita jacksonii in the strict sense. So what you have is a cap and stem mushroom that's really quite distinctive um, in its appearance. And this is, um, this uh, description that I'm gonna offer applies to all uh, mushrooms in Amanita section caesarea. And then when I get to the part that's like, and now what makes this Amanita jacksonii? I'll call that out. So um, you have a cap and stem mushroom. The Amanita genus is characterized by being a cap and stem mushroom that has some sort of um, what's called a universal veil or basically some sort of tissue at the base of the stem that uh, protects the baby mushroom as it's maturing. In the case of Amanita section caesarea, what you have is what's called a, uh, a saccate vulva. So basically it's a cup or a sac. It's really in the case of Amanita jacksonii and uh, most of its relatives, like very um, white and kind of cottony as it dries out, it almost becomes leathery. Uh, and it's really, um, you know, quite uh, goose egg-like is how some people have described it. So as you can see, you know, it makes a very nice, uh, you know, cup of tissue at the base of the stem. And that is a really good feature, not the only feature, but a good feature for Amanita section caesarea. The other things that you're looking at are, uh, you know, a mushroom that is typically brightly colored. So you're talking palettes of like red to vermilion to orange uh, to bright, bright, dark red. A lot of the, uh, you know, Amanita section caesarea that are in the southeastern U.S. kind of top out at like a reddish color that's like this. And this is pretty red, but there are some like, for instance, the um, Amanita caesarea, which is a Mediterranean species that was very popular with the Romans, that has more like brilliant crimson tones to it. So in the southeastern U.S., we have a lot of like, uh, you know, poppy colored mushrooms, essentially. So, okay. So let's talk about those. And then um, also a couple of lookalikes that you want to be aware of uh, when you're looking for uh, Caesar Amanita mushrooms. So, um, 
Uh, I got to the part where I was talking about our SAC8 Volva and uh, other features. So we have the, we have the bright coloration here. Uh, oftentimes with uh, Amanita and you know Caesar Amanitas of one kind or another, you'll have a little bit of differentiation between how intense that color and like red to orange yellow you have. There's also in most species uh, pretty noticeable striations. So these are stripy grooves that are along the margin of the cap. Some of the species have really prominent, uh, you know, striation. This is one you can see really, you know, it, it's very, very stripy. So when you see a mature one, uh, you know, you have a kind of a variation in how much stripiness you, you get. Uh, and then additionally, um, you have rings on the stem of these mushrooms. This one's probably the best example. And so they tend to be really prominent uh, partial veils. So basically it's tissue that protects the mushroom's gills. Uh, and in um, Amanita section Caesarea, your gill color is typically some sort of yellowy color with a cup, like a standard deviation toward the white side and a standard deviation towards the like dark yellowy side of things. So, um, you know, that partial veil is oftentimes similar to, uh, you know, the, the sort of yellowy gill color. In the case of uh, Amanita jacksonii, it's actually far more sort of orangey in color. But you do have some sort of ring on the stem that is uh, typically, you know, yellow to orange in color. Your gills, as I mentioned, we have sort of um, yellowy colors more often than not. Uh, that's really helpful because a lot of Amanitas have, uh, especially the, you know, dangerous ones, have white gills. And so uh, that sort of yellowy reddish palette with the big old goose egg at the base uh, is oftentimes like, okay, I'm in the Amanita Caesarea section. And I say sometimes because I'm going to show you a mushroom in a second that does not have a big sack of uh, tissue at the base, but it still is a part of um, Amanita, Amanita section Caesarea, as far as I know. Okay, so let's talk about what differentiates Amanita section, uh, section Caesarea from Amanita jacksonii in the strict sense. Really, in the field, what it comes down to is you're looking at a mushroom with all the features I discussed, and then uh, in the case of Jacksonia, you have these uh, sort of scales of orange tissue that, uh, especially as the mushroom matures and it pulls apart, they almost leave stretch marks, or sometimes you'll see it described as um, chevrons. Uh, so oftentimes they have sort of, uh, you know, pointy, uh, you know, tips. Um, this one is a little bit, you know, like it, it, it had a slug visitor before I got to it, but it's a really good example of like you have a yellow stem and then over top of it, you have this um, sort of orangey color. Also in Amanita jacksonii, that uh, ring on the stem tends to be an orangier color. So it more matches oftentimes this material than the gill material. And I point that out because, let's see. Oh yeah, here, I'll pick this guy up again. So, uh, because, you know, you have a pretty yellowish ring on this particular stem and also, you know, it matches the, the yellow stem that doesn't have the chevrons. So you're looking at a totally different species in Amanita section Caesarea here. I don't know which one it is. Um, and so for my purposes, the best thing to do if I have a reddish orangish mushroom that looks like Amanita jacksonii, but it does not have the chevrons on, on the stem, the best thing for me to do is to call it Amanita section Caesarea Sterps hemibaffa. And uh, I've got another video about all of that. So it's essentially a way of being like, it is in this particular section of Amanita. It has this sort of red vermilion color palette to it, but it is not specifically Amanita jacksonii. All right, so uh, let's talk about a couple of the yellow um, members of Amanita section Caesarea. So first of all, I have one that I'm pretty confident is uh, called Amanita beningiana. So we have Amanita beningiana, Amanita arcansa arcansana, and another one that I can't pronounce yet, and I'm trying to learn. <laughs> but those are the, uh, you know, yellowy Caesars that I am aware of. Of course, with all of these, the odds are that there are more species represented than there are like names or even points of reference for. Uh, but nonetheless, you do have a number of uh, Amanita section Caesarea mushrooms that are, uh, you know, instead of being orangey or red, they are yellow. And uh, I call this Amanita beningiana for a couple of reasons. First of all, you know, 
Amanita Beningiana and Amanita Arkansana are both like in this um, yellowy uh, neighborhood. And uh, the, the difference as I understand it, first of all, is that uh, Amanita Arkansana tends to have whiter gills. Uh, and this is a fairly pale, uh, excuse me, pale gilled mushroom. But um, also the uh, base of the stem, what you have here is not quite so big of a cup or goose egg sack. And so my understanding, and this is, you know, tenuous, and so correct me if you know for sure, is that Amanita beningiana, first of all, has striation, but it's not like ginormous striation. So you have some going on here, but it's not that, uh, you know, dominant. You have a yellow mushroom that has sort of um, almost a uh, like amberish color in the middle. Uh, yellowy gills and a little bit of this yellowy stretch mark activity and then a um, you know cup at the base of the set uh, cup at the base of the stem that is not a big um, again goose egg and I'm, I'm gonna point that you know this is an example of a, a obviously a pretty significant difference in the size of the vulvas uh, represented here and again you know I'm not 100% but I, I'm gonna call this Amanita beningiana uh, provisionally but I'm still learning how to distinguish them here's Here's a larger floppier version of the same mushroom. So you see it, you know, again, kind of a smaller uh, cup of tissue at the base and, uh, you know, um, you get this sort of sunny yellowish color with a little bit of uh, darker yellow in the middle. All right, so let's talk about, oh, and I want to show you one last example, actually, of uh, this mushroom that I really like because uh, Amanita section cesarea, there's some species that, um, have a tendency to get a little bit of this uh, universal veil tissue t stuck to the cap. And that is uh, sort of the remains of this, uh, you know, the, the cup basically that's at the bottom of the mushroom. But as the mushroom emerges, you get like a little skull cap or a little chip of uh, universal veil tissue here. A lot of the mushrooms that are in Amanita section cesarea that are in the Southeast don't really have this feature. And I don't know why, I just like love the little skull cap look. So this is the, uh, you know, third specimen of three that I found growing together that again, I'm, I'm thinking is Amanita beningiana, um, but you know, it could be Arkansas or something different. But either way, I'm very, very, um, you know, confident that it's an Amanita section cesarea because of that color palette, because of the striation, because we have, you know, um, a, uh, a, you know, a sack at the bottom of the, 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 uh, the stem, whether or not it's large enough to be described as goose egg-like is, uh, you know, remains to be seen. I suppose I'm going to post some pictures and see if people, um, give me some guidance on that. All right, so let's talk about uh, other mushrooms in Amanita section cesarea. I'm just going to show you sort of the range of size you have going on here. So this is a mature specimen. Um, I think this probably is actually Amanita jacksonii, uh, you know, in the strict sense. But um, this mushroom really took a good bit of damage before I got to it. And so it's like, is that just the remains of a... Um, of a ring on the stem, or is that some of the oranginess? I'm not quite sure. Let's open it up and see what color the, the flesh is. Okay, it's kind of whitish. Another thing you'll see with these mushrooms is that they are, uh, you know, tend to be hollow on the inside, sometimes with a little bit of cottony material. Um, but, you know, again, typically kind of a hollow mushroom uh, overall. All right, so let's talk about our lookalikes as I continue to get eaten by bugs. So first of all, I wanna talk about um, Amanita parsi vulvata, and this is a really lovely little species. It oftentimes gets mistaken for um, both Amanita jacksonia, jacksonii, other Caesar Amanitas. Sometimes people think it's Amanita muscaria, uh, but this is, you know, a bright, the reason it gets mistaken is it's a brightly colored mushroom that tends to be sort of, uh, you know, um, reddish on top and you have yellowy gills. And since those are descriptors that are in your field guides, uh, for, you know, Amanita jacksonii and its relatives, people sometimes uh, make that misidentification. But we do have a very clearly, like once you get to know these mushrooms, a very pretty significant difference betwixt them. So first of all, Amanita parsi vulvata does not have a ring on the stem. That's a pretty unusual feature for any Amanita. So it doesn't have a ring on the stem, but what it does have is a little kind of, um, you know, bulb at the base. It's not super impressive. You have a little sort of, um, like ring essentially uh this it's not a lot there but you can definitely see you know it's a bulb and then there's sort of a collared ring here uh at the base 
totally different, even from, you know, what I'm debating with myself of whether or not that's goose egg, uh, and, uh, you know, goose egg like enough to be considered, uh, you know, Amanita beningiana or not, and all the argumentation I'm having with myself, Amanita parsifolvata clearly. Its stem base is uh, just a different type. And as you get to know Amanitas, the different stem bases and what they appear like is really important. So, uh, you know, you have all the, the coloration of um, one of the, um, you know, Caesar mushrooms, but no ring and no cup at the base of the stem. Additionally, and you can't see this terribly well on this specimen, but you oftentimes have a little bit of, uh, you know, universal veil tissue. So a couple of little yellowy warts on top. And uh, that's why it sometimes gets mistaken for uh, Amanita muscaria. Um, this one doesn't have any of them whatsoever. Another thing you'll notice is that Amanita parsivalvata does have a little bit of striation. It's not super distinct though. So like you see a little bit of stripiness on most specimens, but it's not nearly as like robust as even, you know, lightly striated uh, Caesar mushrooms. So that's Amanita parsivalvata. All right, let's look at this little dude, which I am going to call, uh, <laughs> I'm gonna call it Amanita Flav flavaconia. There is a possibility this is actually a slightly less uh, common species called Amanita elongata. Uh, but this is a, you know, mushroom that, um, Amanita flavaconia is oftentimes uh, more like reddish. And the reason I'm saying that it could be uh, the other species is because it has a, a white stem. It doesn't have any sort of reddish or orangey tinges to it, but in every other respect, it looks exactly like Amanita flavaconia. So I'm gonna go through that. Uh, and the common name for that is yellow patches. I guess the common name for Amanita parsivalvata is the false Caesar, or at least, I mean, that's what people are calling it. Um, parsivalvata, I don't know, I, I just, um, how do I remember that? I don't, I don't know how I remember that. It just sounds nice, I suppose. I've never had difficulty with that particular epithet, which is weird for me because I usually forget them like 10 times. All right, so uh, Amanita flavaconia and similar mushrooms are sometimes mistaken for Caesar mushrooms because they are, you know, a cap and stem Amanita mushroom that has uh, oftentimes more yellowy gills than this. Uh, you have a ring on the stem and... Um, Let's see if I can find one that's a little bit better. You do have, uh, and this is how it gets its name, yellow patches. You oftentimes have little warts or remains of universal veil tissue on uh, the cap. But the thing that makes Amanita parsivalvata what it is and how it is uh, relatively easy to identify is that it has this yellowy uh, material at the base of the stem. So really you don't have much of any kind of universal veil going on whatsoever, but you have this flaky yellow stuff. And that's the same flaky yellow stuff you'll find on the top of yellow patches. And so, uh, you know, let's see if I can, if there's any remaining here. No, it's starting to, to flake off. So, the, you know, the, basically you have like this little cluster of sort of yellowy, poofy, floofy stuff. And then, oh, and a good bit of it on the caps here. Another thing that you'll notice is that these mushrooms are far more, uh, you know, dainty than uh, even a small, like this is a fairly small specimen of Amanita jacksonii. And, um, you know, again, I'm pretty sure this is Amanita elongata because it is uh, white stemmed, its gills are a little whiter, but uh, that sort of flaky yellow material at the base is what you'll see in Amanita flavaconia. And oftentimes Amanita flavaconia, it looks very much like this, identical to this, except maybe a little more red and a little more sort of scarlet, yeah, and yeah, scarlety yellow uh, tones. And so this is considered a lookalike as well. All right, so um, I also wanna share with you just really quickly what Amanita jacksonii looks like when it's about to emerge from its egg. So Amanitas come up uh, in a little protective tissue. Uh, that's where the cup comes from. And so this is what this mushroom looks like when it is, you know, has not opened up at all. So I'm going to basically remove this uh, universal veil tissue and you can see, uh, you know, essentially just the mushroom inside. And I'm gonna 
bust it wide open and I'm probably gonna just show you why it is that the Romans and a lot of people really like Amanita, uh, you know, Caesar Amanita eggs is because they're, the gills are nicely tight, nice and tightly packed. And so, you know, it's something that you can slice up and you can enjoy a little bit and it's very nice. And don't poison your friends. It's very important not to poison your friends or your emperor or anybody uh, with uh, Caesar mushrooms. Um, but nonetheless, so that's what the, the egg form looks like. And after a few hours, that egg, you know, will break and it leaves that, uh, that uh, universal veil at the base. All right, so we've talked about all of that fun stuff. I do want to, oh, I'm sitting on the poor deer. I want to show off uh, Amanita rosae tincta. This is the rose tinted Amanita. Um, gosh, I'm not getting very good. Uh, you know, it's not a very colorful uh, specimen, unfortunately, but it is um, one of the Amanitas that has a really nice uh, basal bulb is how it's described. So, you know, when you're dealing with Amanitas, you have bulbs, you have cups and sacks and all kinds of different stuff going on at the base. And this is a good basal bulb. Uh, and I, I love Amanita rosae tincta because it's kind of rosy colored and it has, uh, when it's first coming up, a little bit of like construction cone orange happening uh, that fades very, very rapidly. So it's a nice, you know, stately, nice curvaceous uh, mushroom that we have here. Uh, next, I want to talk about the mushroom I want to get away from my physical presence as quickly as I can. So this is Amanita dousy phase. Uh, this mushroom is in Amanita um, section Lepidella. And I say that with a little bit of hand waviness because I understand we have some changes going on. And so Amanita section Lepidella may be turning into something else. And this may end up being like Amanita section Ro Roanokensis. So like Roanoke, Virginia, Roanokensis. Anyway, this is Amanita dausipes, ginormous freaking mushroom. Uh, you will notice that it's kind of a like um, off-white color. Uh, this is very typical for it and you sometimes get like sort of little uh, pinkish, almost a little bit of orangey, but it's more on the pink side uh, staining at the base. Um, the mushroom is really uh, sort of um, uh, bulbous at the base. You know, this broke right off. If I had dug it up a little bit more, you'd see a little more uh, material here. Also, you have, um, you know, sort of a, a bit of fluffiness on the cap. And then this giant uh, sort of flocculose uh, partial veil. And that would leave a big old ring on the stem. Uh, but right now it's still attached to the gills. And so, uh, you know, this is one of a lot of our really monster sized uh, Amanitas. But Amanita dalcipes, the reason that it is super easy to identify is because it smells like ham and not in a good way. This is a baby version of Amanita dalcipes. So this actually has better um, identification features on it than the other one. So I'll go over them real quick. So you have this giant, you know, again, kind of tan colored mushroom, a little bit of um, sort of like pinky tones, a lot of uh, sort of breaking and splitting at the ba at this bulbous base here. And then sort of, again, uh, wartiness that will come off reasonably easy. And again, it smells like a ham sandwich that's been out in the sun for a couple of hours. It's really grotesque. So this is presumed to be uh, edible, <laughs> presumed to be inedible and possibly poisonous. And I just want to get it out of my area because it's, it's stanking up the joint. Okay, so let's finish with... Uh, Amanita Amara rubescens group. So these were a little bit prettier this morning when I gathered them, but this is the mushroom that is commonly called the blusher. Uh, we have, uh, you know, it's a species group. So there are several different species. These are mature specimens. And I just wanted to share them with you because they have such a lovely blend of sort of iconic Amanita features. So first of all, you have these warts on the cap. That is the remnants from the universal veil. So warts on the cap are really, uh, uh, you know, distinctive feature for some Amanita mushrooms. So you can see that right here and they flake right off. And that's, you know, when you see like mushroom art and you have the, you know, Amanita muscaria, like a red mushroom with white spots, the white spots are these warts that are the remains of whatever's going on at the base of the mushroom. 
In addition, you have kind of a like a tan to fawn brown colored mushroom. Sometimes it's much more pale than that. Uh, but what makes the blusher really uh, distinctive and where it gets its common name is uh, it uh, develops these sort of elaborate reddish, like reddish brown stains. And you can see that along uh, the stem as well. The stem oftentimes, uh, gosh, we don't have really good examples of that, uh, but like it has a bulbous base and oftentimes you'll have little pits that are sort of like a mahogany or like a Pinot Noir red inside. So the blusher uh, is an edible mushroom. I don't eat it, but um, it is popular with some people. So uh, that's, that's a thing. I think that's everything that I possibly can um, talk about with any degree of responsibility. I have a number of other things here that uh, I simply don't have the bandwidth or capacity to talk about in a reasonable way. So I'm going to pack it in for the night and uh, put on some cortisone because I am covered in bug bites at this point. But TLDR, we have our uh, Amanita Jacksonii in the strict sense with our, our nice, uh, you know, uh, orange ornamentation on the stem. Let's show that one more time. Uh, and, uh, you know, a beautiful little umbonate cap with a little bit of uh, multicoloration. We have our other reddish Amanitas and Amanita section Caesarea Stirps Hemi Baffa that don't have our orange ornamentation, but in all other respects look quite similar. We have Amanita, maybe Beningiana, that I have lost track of. Oh, here's the baby uh, that, you know, does not have a ginormous uh, sort of, you know, vulvate sac, but it does have a, a sac and it's these lovely sort of yellowy colors. Again, could be something other than Amanita beningiana. We have Amanita parsivalvata uh, weighing in at very, very few inches and also with no ring and no cup at the base of the stem. And then we have yellow patches with uh, some yellow patches, both at the bottom of the stem and on the cap. Uh, all of them are not Amanita jacksonii in the strict sense, but one is Amanita jacksonii in the strict sense. All right, I've tortured myself and you quite enough. I hope you have a lovely rest of your mushroom season. We'll see you next time.